He wants to save his own ass. Order. Hey, don't be stupid, okay? Don't be dead. Order. What you mean? Do you hear me, controller? Do you hear me? I want you to know exactly what you did. Walk away. Recently, the first few seasons of the original Law and Order series popped up on one of my streaming services. As I have never watched a single episode of a show and it is undoubtedly one of the largest and most successful TV franchises in the world, I was curious to finally check it out. I planned to only watch the first few episodes, but ended up watching the whole first season. How did those early episodes hold up? Are they worth checking out? Hi there, it's Micha. Stay with me for a bit and I will let you know. I guess there is no one who doesn't know the iconic sound that kicks off each episode. The setup is simple, yet timeless. Each week a crime happens and first we follow the team of detectives investigating it and then a team of district attorneys bringing it to court. In season 1 we have George Zunza as senior detective sergeant Max Grevy, Chris North as junior detective Mike Logan and Dan Florick as their captain Donald Cragen. Michael Moriarty plays executive assistant district attorney Ben Stone. Richard Brooks is his assistant district attorney Paul Robinet, and Stephen Hill acts as their boss. District attorney Adam Schiff. That's basically the synopsis. I was pleasantly surprised that the first 10 or so seasons were remastered in HD, which gave them a look that doesn't feel that dated. Even though season 1 started 34 years ago back in 1990. Even more surprising, almost shocking, the topics still feel fresh. I guess society didn't change as much as we thought. There were episodes like the one around abortion rights that are as topical today as back then. The main giveaway for the show's age is them not using cell phones yet, but running to pay phones or using their radios. Think so? Who are you calling? Even the style of clothing hasn't changed that much to be an obvious indicator for the 90s. In the first few episodes, the show obviously still tried to find its way. Those episodes often ended their teasers, the parts before the main credits, in weird places that didn't feel quite right. Same goes for the end of the episodes, which sometimes felt a bit sudden. That however soon changed and things became smoother, more akin to what we are used to in current shows. They also experimented a lot with the main characters, with the senior detective becoming more Catholic conservative along the way, after being quite liberal at the start. I guess to create a bit of tension between him and his partner in some episodes where needed. So a 17 year old should just louse up her whole life by having a kid. A 17 year old shouldn't be doing what makes babies. And crooks shouldn't have guns. Get real. What I really liked about the season is that the cops and attorneys being by the book. They do not break the law to catch the bad guys and if something gets close to the line, they are called out for it and it has consequences, like evidence not being used in court. The detectives are also not, at least so far, manhandling suspects to get confessions. Like you have seen in other recent shows a lot, until the case of George Floyd changed the perspective on that drastically. There is some light shoving without force that should also not happen, but which for a police procedural is comparatively tame. In the first episode, I was also surprised that they jumped into the characters without a big introduction which was fine. But when I got to episode 6, it was apparent that the episodes were shown out of order. As the detectives met the assistant DA for the first time in this one... Robinette? Uh, Logan. Grievy. He's Logan. And his boss's boss, the DA, was even played by a different actor. That out of order issue bugged me a bit and I was wondering why they haven't fixed this on either the DVD releases or streaming services since the original airing. But other than that, there was no impact on the plot of a show. What I find highly entertaining is the sheer array of supporting and guest actors that are sometimes people who only had this appearance as their main credit on their Vita, but regularly you see famous faces when they were either very young or before they got famous. In season 1, for instance, you have William H. Macy popping up for a scene, Francis Conroy of American Horror Story fame had an early role, Harold Perrineau from Lost and From From, the mystery show titled From that is, had one of his first appearances, as well as the neighborhood's Trisha Arnold here in her early 20s. And Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Clark Gregg had his fourth acting credit here, and this is just naming a few. One episode really took the cake, with a pre-millennium role for Megan Gallagher, a pre-fame appearance of Samuel Jackson, and we see Philip Seymour Hoffman 
in his very first acting role, right beside Gil Bellows doing his second acting gig. Not knowing that before, I expected them to have larger parts in the episode, but they were only there for a handful of scenes. Therefore, you never know if a big name in a supporting role means anything, as they may not have had their breakthrough yet. That keeps you on your toes, while in current shows it is almost always a dead giveaway if a famous actor is turning up that they will either be the culprit or at least are more important as they first appear. And with that being said, let's get to the rating. Like I mentioned, the topics and style still hold up nicely. The acting is great and the story is compelling. The show started while still sorting out things, but finding its footing, it quickly developed a consistent feeling. For me, this was overall a very good first season. There is still room for improvement, but many things are done well, so I'm rating season 1 with 7.5 out of 10 points. The show so far highlighted that some elements in crime shows never grow old, making this one stand the test of time. At least so far. I hope the next seasons will hold up similarly well. By the way, I'm not sure how many seasons I will watch and how long it will take to get through them, but likely more season reviews will show up over time, so stay tuned. What about you? Have you seen the show back then? Are you watching its current seasons or other iterations right now? Do you think about revisiting the earlier seasons? Whatever you like to share, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share or subscribe. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching. Each week, <coughs> Michael Moriarty plays ex plays executive assistant district <laughs> Richard Brooks is his assistant is I hope the next seasons will also hold up similarly similarly well.